right, so here's our quick exercise for 1.5 to see if we can identify the largest source of error, uh, largest source of bias. So the, the big thing here is don't sit there and say, is there a reason that there might have been response bias so that people wouldn't have responded or that we might have left people out? Instead, if we're talking about the largest source of bias, think about what I am trying to get you to realize or see in this question. So as always, feel free to pause, try this on your own, and then come back. So number one, our magazine mailed a questionnaire to HR directors and received responses from 23% of them. Those responded said they did not find such surveys intruded significantly on their workday. Now, I'll have a lot of students who'll sit there and say, well, this is response bias. These people are talking about it not intruding on their workday, and they obviously took time out of their workday to send this thing in. But the bigger issue here is that I've given you a number. I said 28% responded. So we already see that there's this issue of non-response, right? Some people did not respond even though they were selected to be, participate. And so that's our biggest issue. Yes, the people who responded are probably going to say that they don't significantly intrude on their workday because they took time out of their workday. But that's because the people who thought it did didn't send theirs back in. So non-response is our biggest issue here. Two, suppose you're conducting a survey regarding illicit drug use among sophomores in the Baltimore School District. You obtain a sample of 12 schools in the district and have teachers verbally administer the survey to all sophomores. So, we want to know about sophomores. We're talking to sophomores. That's all good. The bigger issue here, there's nothing saying that they didn't respond, right? I don't have any wording showing that we're, our population and our sample are different or that people didn't respond. The biggest issue here is going to be response bias. Because we're having students, our teachers, verbally administer a question about drug use. And if this is my teacher and I'm a sophomore in high school, I'm probably not going to answer that question truthfully if the answer is that I have used some sort of illicit drug. Illicit drug. All right, three, a polling organization is going to conduct a study to estimate the percent of households that speak a foreign language. It mails a questionnaire to 1,023 randomly selected households and 15 are returned. So again, we see this big number situation. Yes, obviously this is stupid. They sent out a questionnaire about speaking English in English, um, but the biggest, most obvious thing here is that we had a lot of people not respond, which may have been because they didn't speak English and couldn't fill out the questionnaire, but we'll never know without having everyone respond. And the last one, a uh, state university group is interested in whether voters would support lowering the legal drinking age. They have chapters on each of California's uh, major universities. Each of the chapters randomly selects 25 students and asks whether they approve of lowering the drinking age. The most significant source of bias should have been under coverage. Who did we want to know about, right? Who was our population? Voters. Who did we go and talk to? Students. That's a big disconnect, right, between our population and our sample. So we have left out everyone who's not a student, all of us old people who don't want young people at the bars with us. So um, that's a big undercover issue. Again, I'll have students say, well, the students are going to be more likely to say. And yes, that's true. It's not a response bias, though. They're responding as they would. It's more an issue of that we've left out this giant part of the population that would probably respond in the negative. 